Hello, brilliant family. This is Teresa Cook, and I have recently had an opportunity to sit down with Dano McCollum, as you can see. He is the co-founder of Bethel School of the Prophets and Prophetic Company, um, and he's here to talk to us about how to hear God. So Dano and Regina have been friends of Graham and I's for several years now, actually, um, and I have been blessed to have heard Dano talk and be in his schools. So I'm so excited for you all to hear him. And one of the things that I love about Dano and his teaching is that there's always permission given to explore the heart of the Father and prophecy and hearing from him. And there's always permission to go bigger than you think you can go. And Dano just makes hearing from God. I get so emotional because I remember all of the experiences that I had in your schools. Dano always makes it so delightful and so fun to hear from God. So I'm so glad that you guys got to hear him today. So just hang on because you're in for a treat today. So hi, Dano. It's so good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's great to be with you, Teresa. So good to see you. Yeah. So listen, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what you're up to these days. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, Graham had a big part in this. <laughs> oh, tell us. Yeah. Well, you know, several years he asked me a question. He said, are we a prophetic company or do we just love prophecy? And I was like, yeah. well, I don't know. I know I love prophecy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but what is a prophetic company? And he looks at me with that Gandalf wisdom look and said, that would be a great two or three year conversation with Holy Spirit. <laughs> As he would like, say. Oh man, come on. Don't Yoda me. Just, just give me the answer, you know, <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. It really was a, a two or three year journey with Holy Spirit to, to find that. And so today I lead a group called the prophetic company and we are based on the values and the protocols that the Lord laid out in that conversation. That was catalytic from, uh, from Graham's question. That is, um, you know, I don't think I've ever heard that story. So that's really fun. Yeah, I don't know that you have. <laughs> he does those things, doesn't he? Where he just asks <laughs> you a question and you're like, I don't even know that I, 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 I you go speechless because you don't even know that that should even be a thought. And then you that's hear it right. and you think, I'm obviously not thinking as big as God. So let's rethink that. Yeah. So, I'm so glad that you said that. I want to go back to your bio for a minute because I'm hoping that you can explain this for us. Sure. In your bio, it says, prophetic reformer revealing the heart and purpose of New Testament prophecy. Can you just explain to us what that is and what that means? Absolutely. Um you know, there are prophetic protesters and prophetic reformers. <laughs> you know, oh. protesters use insight to shout out what's wrong um, and hopefully through that to bring repentance. But uh, prophetic reformers, a reformer actually gets inside the system, find out what's good about the now and better about the future and builds a pathway from the good now to the better tomorrow. Here at Brilliant, we put a lot of emphasis on asking God questions. Do you find that that's common in believers? It is not common enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually, yes. in our, we have a, a three-year mentorship training, but in the third year, it's we have an entire month that's just focused around asking God questions and what type of questions to ask God. And I think... Teresa, one of the reasons that people don't ask more questions is they really doubt their accessibility to the Father. You know, they doubt that God really speaks to them. You know, the very first temptation in the garden was, did God really say? And it started a inferiority complex in the very DNA of humanity to question whether we could hear the voice of God or not but then jesus comes on the scene and says my sheep know my voice and yeah. you know so everything in the kingdom is really based on voice recognition you know can we recognize all the ways that the father is speaking but uh, questions are such an important 
part of that, actually, um, part of the biblical language for uh, conversations with God was called inquiring of the Lord. And mm -hmm. the prophets would go and inquire of the Lord. And inquiry is exactly that. It's asking the right questions mm -hmm. to reveal um, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge hidden in the person of Jesus. So what do you feel like has been the most effective tool or practice that you have learned to get people um, to hear the voice of God? Well, Teresa, one of the things we say a lot in the prophetic company is the challenge is never to get God to speak. The challenge is recognizing all the ways that God is already speaking. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think of the child Samuel in 1 Samuel 3. He was hearing the audible voice of the father call him by name. But to him, it sounded like something natural. So he kept going to his priest and saying, you called me, you called me, you called me. He's like, no, I didn't call you. And then finally the priest recognizes, mm -hmm. hey, God must be speaking to this child. So he tells him how to respond. He says, okay, if that happens again, do this and this and this. And, and Teresa, the truth is, I believe that God is speaking to every one of us really 24 seven. Mm -hmm. And it's just about recognizing all the different ways that God speaks so that we can begin to respond. One of our famous Grahamisms, <laughs> and we quote it all the time in prophetic company. I mean, all of our people know this because of the 10 years that we spent with you and Graham and, and, um, and we say when we do by, intention what we've done by intuition we achieve acceleration and i think that really describes our walk with the lord that um a lot of us are kind of intuitively following you know the breadcrumbs so to speak mm -hmm. <laughs> of the lord's leading but when we learned to recognize oh that's god mm -hmm. um then we move from that intuition to that intention and we start accelerating our uh, everything. We start accelerating our accuracy and our clarity and our confidence. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, one of my heroes of old was Smith Wigglesworth, who was a great healing revivalist and raised many people from the dead. And they asked him the secrets of his power. And he said two things, and I love both things. He said, first of all, at the slightest whisper of the Holy Spirit, I turn aside to obey. Mm -hmm. I love that. At the slightest whisper of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I turn aside. And, um, you know, turning aside at the whispers is absolutely a key. You know, another thing Graham always says is you're you're currently moving at the speed of your own obedience, however long it takes you to recognize that God is speaking and then respond. That's the rate of your acceleration. So, you know, that's the first thing is, is again, moving from that intuition to the intention and responding mm -hmm. quicker, believing more. Um, but the second thing he said is if God's not moving, I move God. And the first thing, the first time I heard that, I was offended. I was like, oh my goodness, that seems presumptuous. That seems across the line. But I started seeing in scripture how it says that God was appalled that no one stirred themselves to take a hold of him. Mm -hmm. And it says, stir up the gift of God that's within you. And I realized that because God's value is relationship, his method is partnership. He, he's not looking to take over. He's looking to partner. And so even learning how to stir ourselves mm -hmm. um, to take a hold of the Lord is equally important to turning aside when he's stirring us. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that, that creates this beautiful dance of mm -hmm. God moving and I respond and me moving and he responds and, and it, it, it's much more like the partnership that I believe the Lord is looking for in relationship. <laughs> Obviously, there's a value in community learning, learning from one another. But I think when one voice is dominating the conversation, then we tend to get a one-dimensional training 
on how to hear the voice of the father because they're going to train the way that they learned. Yeah. But when we look at the person of Jesus, yeah. we see a dimensionality. He said, I, mm -hmm. I do what I see the father doing. I say what I hear the father saying, I perceive, you know, and, and then he was moved with compassion. And so we have this little, I'll, I'll throw this slide up, Teresa, this, yeah, we have this little pattern that we use oh. of ways to receive spiritual information and seeing, hearing, sensing and feeling, and then knowing and perceiving. And we can receive this information externally, like from outside sources, internally within ourselves, or mystically in that sense of actually a, you know, an angelic source or, or, or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So we have, for instance, you mentioned uh, that we could watch a movie and mm -hmm. in that movie, God could speak to us. I've had that happen so many times. Well, that would yeah. be an external scene or an external hearing, or we can hear the still small voice internally or see an internal picture or imagination that would be internal hearing or internal scene. And then mystical hearing would be like hearing the audible voice of God. Mystical scene would be to have an open vision where it, uh, it just unfolds before you and you see it with your natural eyes. But through that, you know, we, we teach these like 12 dimensions of receiving spiritual information through seeing, hearing, sensing and feeling, knowing and perceiving, but then also dimensionally, some people get it more externally, more internally, or even more mystically. And uh, so it starts making room for everybody in the body of Christ Mm -hmm. uh, to function like a body part, you know, <laughs> um, and, and mm -hmm. to be a part of the greater whole. And, and therefore within the community, we have a more circumspect and complete picture vision of clarity of voice in what the father's saying. Um, I think there is a, a separation myth, um, mm -hmm. where we, we, have an idea that the Lord needs to come and do something from outside mm -hmm. in, but the kingdom of God is an inside out kingdom. It's mm -hmm. Jesus said, the kingdom is in you. The word of the Lord is in you. It's near you. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth. And so we're always waiting for something outside of us to empower us or overshadow us or, um, you know, um, something, something externally to be more than mm -hmm. when the truth is that the more than is Christ in you, the hope of glory, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge hidden in this person of Jesus that is within us. And so we have a come and do mentality rather than a go and do mentality. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Jesus is, Jesus's mandate was not a Lord, if you had been here, then this would happen. Or Lord, if you'll just come, then this will happen. No, his mandate is, hey, the kingdom is at hand. It's within your reach. Go and do, you know, mm -hmm. go and be. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think there's this, this myth of separateness, this myth of outside in, this myth that I need something more to be um, the the fullness of who I am. And it's like, no, you just need to unveil the new creation. You need to believe that when you invited Christ in, no matter how bad you are at following mm -hmm. him, he's really good at possessing you. <laughs> God's really good at what he does. So, so the moment you said, yes, come in and commune with me, he did. And God is great at possessing you and living within you. And he promises he'll never leave. He'll never forsake you. And so, you know, shifting from that outside into that inside out kingdom, mm -hmm. I think is one of the most important things. I, I think the other thing is, you know, as I said at the beginning of the broadcast, Teresa, the very first temptation was the temptation of uh, of confusion. Did God really say, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and there is this from that 
training from the fall, there is still this idea of, you know, did God really say, does God really speak? Mm -hmm. does, can I really know um, all those kind of questions? And for me, it goes back to kind of two things. First of all, every word, every impression, every reception needs to be tested and judged through the filter of God's character and nature. Does it sound like something God would say mm -hmm. through scripture? Is there anything counter to scripture that I'm hearing or seeing? Then I need to flush that. That wouldn't be correct. Or um, how does it resonate with me? You know, is there something within me that is screaming yes to this, you know? Mm -hmm. And then this very, very important one is how would people respond within community? In mm -hmm. other words, you know, if my family has a serious question about what I'm hearing, it doesn't mean I'm wrong, but it just means I, I need to, mm -hmm. I need to take it a little more seriously. So how do you know that it's really God and you're not just making it up? Well, first of all, you trust yeah. what Christ has done in you and through you. Yeah. And then you, um, and then you speak things that are within the protocols of scripture. In other words, it, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, if you can fathom mysteries and prophesy and know all these depths, but you have not love, it's nothing. In other words, the, the measure of New Testament prophecy is not accuracy. It's love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that <laughs> it's is not good. accuracy. It's affection. So if yeah. someone feels loved when you're done, yeah. then then you have proven that it is real, that it yeah. is effective, that it is worked. Yeah. And um, so I think we've put the standard at accuracy, and um, that's gotten us a lot in a lot of trouble yeah. because there are many people that have the accuracy of a word, but not the affection of the father's right. heart. Um, do you have time to tell us, maybe share a, a story or two of just uh, people who have been resistors, what was the word that you said? Um, protesters, yeah. who then became reformers and what that process looked like, or maybe a story that stands out. Yeah. So I, um, I was ministering in Russia a few years ago in the capital of Siberia, Krasnoyarsk. And, um, there was a pastor, he was considered the head theologian of this movement in, in Russia. And he was impacted in a meeting that we had done in St. Petersburg. So he brought 75 of his people to a conference we were doing in the capital. And, um, and he, one of them was his 17 year old son. Well, we were doing our finders training. So we're, this is where we use prophecy to and spiritual gifts to find missing children, to help solve crimes, to, mm -hmm. uh, so we have a network of this uh, all around the world. And I was mm -hmm. teaching it in Russia. So we, we s took somebody out of the room and you know, hid them somewhere on the campus and nobody know who took them or where they were. And so everyone starts getting clues in the spirit and everything. There were about 2000 people there. And, you know, it was the first time everybody was learning, but in that group, there were eight people that got every clue, right. And one of those, uh, hmm. one of those people was the 17 year old son. And he went to his dad and he said, Papa, I can hear God just tears streaming oh. down his face. Papa, I can hear God. Well, this young man, he was a good young man, but he was, you know, getting C's in school. He went to his teacher and he, and he said, I repent to you. I haven't been doing my best. I haven't been trying. Became an A student. He went to his youth group that he just attended and he repented he, he repented to his youth pastor and said, I'm sorry, I haven't been fully engaging, but hey, I can hear God and this is what happened. And he <laughs> shared it with his youth group. His youth group gets on fire. People get saved and they all start prophesying over one another. And so um, it was so beautiful to hear this theologian tell the story of how his son went from a lukewarm 
passive bystander mm -hmm. to a fire starter just by recognizing that he could hear the voice of God. At Brilliant, it never gets old being part of a movement of believers who are experiencing daily breakthroughs with live, interactive heart learning. We celebrate every time someone rises victorious over negative thinking and who learns to walk with God at the next level by finding security in hearing the voice of God. We want you to discover a confidence and a clarity in Him that you've never experienced before. Over time, we've developed two different ways to partner in your continued growth with God. We found that some of our members like to study independently grow in the secret place and watch and learn at their own pace, while others thrive in group dynamics. They learn best with discussions, live calls, and room to ask questions. They want to be in a community environment where they can hear what other people are learning and celebrate breakthroughs together. So we've created both levels of learning to support our entire community. My question is, which is right for you? Both membership levels include access to over 450 crafted devotional mentoring videos. You can immediately watch over 50 series, conferences, and events that invite you into the richness of your relationship with God as you learn together with him. We've created series to help get anyone unstuck, to upgrade your thinking, to release you to walk in boldness and freedom, and live in victory in any situation. So Brilliant TV Standard is great for independent learners who simply want access to the devotional materials and like to go at their own pace unguided. With Brilliant TV Standard, you can access the full Brilliant TV library with a small monthly payment. Seriously, less than the price of one cup of coffee a week. Or you can purchase lifetime access to the entire library and never pay again. However, if you want access to a coach-guided group in a live Zoom call, learning sessions with room to ask questions and share, be in monthly watch parties and behind-the-scenes sessions and interviews, then Brilliant TV Premium Membership is the best fit for you. Learn with people who love the revelation that you love. If you're in a season in which it will be helpful to have a community rally around you for some extra support, then Brilliant TV Premium is a perfect complement for this season. Remember, membership is an investment that you make into your lifestyle with God. You are sowing into your own growth in the kingdom. Your stated purpose, therefore, is to grow up into all things in Christ. When your purpose for yourself is in harmony with the kingdom, you will lack nothing. So if you're ready to upgrade your learning so you can meet life's challenges with fullness and joy, then come on a journey with leaders and a community who are uplifting and kind. If you want to believe the best and embrace the truth of who you are becoming, then start or upgrade your membership today. For more information, check below. Thanks for listening. The Lord was growing me up in Him. I knew He loved me, but I was constantly falling backwards. I used to suffer a lot from anxiety, fear, and intimidation. I've been saved for 40 years, but spent 32 of it not knowing my identity in Christ, and that just caused 
struggles with God's love and performance. I once was shy and intimidated and insecure. I grew up in Christianity, but uh, went my own way. Eventually, I ended up in prison. I had a terrible methamphetamine problem that would come and go, and it was just tearing my life apart. I came out of a very abusive background. My father was very abusive, and I never understood the love of God. There was so much noise in my head of, you should go faster, you should do this, you should do that, you're too far behind. Brilliant has been amazing for me. I have changed. Even my family is saying it. I'm more at peace. Things are changing for the better. I'm dead indeed to sin. I'm alive under my daddy, and I walk in newness of life. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. Woo! You guys, uh, thank you so much. I have been a member of Brilliant TV and it has totally changed my life. I began seeing myself in the new lens. There's nothing wrong with me. My life has changed. Brilliant TV has changed my life. God branded me with his goodness and mercy and love. And since then I have been strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I've grown so much and God has just replaced so much pain and trauma and hurt with more of his kingdom. My perspective has changed from believing that once I was broken and fractured to healed and whole, from thinking I was rejected to knowing that I am accepted, from frightened to absolutely loved. And when I heard that slow learning is great learning, I heard a peace and felt a peace within me and that has stayed with me. I have been transformed and I now understand that God never changes and he's always good and he's always kind and he's always gentle and he's a totally different God than the way I grew up believing. I can honestly say I am a totally different woman with hope for my future and confidence in my unchanging God. There's something different about Brilliant TV because they show you how to walk out every day living and experiencing your identity in Christ that I never knew before. Brilliant TV will literally change your life. I just absolutely love Brilliant TV. It is the best investment I ever made. Always found them encouraging, insightful, and engaging. I particularly appreciated the interactive approach to us being taught, where others share and engage you as you apply the teachings that are shared. The variety of classes, impartations, studies is unexhaustible. I have seen changes in my life. Love all the staff, just so, so thoughtful and so kind, exuding God. On the days that are difficult, I find myself quickly opening the app and finding one of the soaking episodes and simply lay down, relax, breathe, and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to my soul. And everything is shifted. It's wonderful having BTV at my fingertips 24-7. Anywhere I am, anywhere I want to go. If I can't sleep in the middle of the night, I can just get up and I can, you know, put my headphones in and away I go and it's wonderful. I just thank BTV for all the teaching and you guys are just so happy and just joyful all the time. I'm very happy to be a lifetime member. I look forward to more keys and more learning and a lot of more years with BTV.